Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine E-Bikes. And for the last several months, I've been traveling around the country visiting family and friends. So I haven't published any new videos on our channel in several months. I'm now back and excited to share a whole new series of videos with our YouTube audience. In this video, I will provide you with some simple tips to increase your e-bike's performance and range. As we all know, you can spend a lot of money on an e-bike or a kit, but out of the box you may not be getting the full potential of your e-bike. There are lots of reasons for that, and I hope these tips can help you with some of those reasons. First, I'm going to start with the throttle. It may seem that all throttles are the same, but it's far from true. The three basic types are thumb throttle, half twist throttle, and full twist throttle. Most throttles connect to the controller with two basic versions of a three-pin connect, the SM or the WP plug. What you will find is that each throttle is made to access a certain amount of power from your bike. I have found that the thumb throttle delivers the lowest amount of power until it's at full throttle. I just replaced my half twist throttle with a full twist and I went from having to twist the throttle three quarters of the way before it provided me with the power I wanted. The full twist only takes an eighth of a turn for the same result. Because throttles are easy to find under $20 online, it's worth experimenting until you find the one that's best for you. Next, a little known tip that can reap big rewards is adding slack to the motor's cabling. A lot of times these wires come crimped out of the box, strangling the electric current it needs to drive. On most e-bikes and kits, you should be able to give the cable the extra slack it needs. I've had cases where I've put together brand new kits that would barely move thinking that I would have to return the kit until I gave it the slack it needed to fire on all cylinders, so to speak. The next and probably most important tip in getting top performance from your e-bike is programming your onboard LCD. If you have an LED, unfortunately you will have to rely on the default settings in your controller. The manuals for the LCDs are not exactly intuitive, so it takes a lot of trial and error to get it right. Programming the LCD correctly can make the difference between an OK e-bike and a mean machine. At the end of this video, I'm providing an in-depth look at how to program three of the more popular LCDs. I'll start with the SW900, the S830, and the TFT750. In many cases, to get the maximum power out of your e-bike, you need to set the PAS to the highest setting. Before that, here are five simple tips to increase your e-bike's range.
in order to get into the bike's parameters, just like with the S830, what you want to do is press the up and down arrow key at the same time for about three seconds, and that will get you in. And then you can navigate the parameters using the M key or the middle key. Now P1 is your display luminance. So one is the darkest and three is the brightest. P2 is your kilometers versus mileage. So zero is for kilometers, one is for miles. P3 is your voltage. Now this particular kit is 24, 36, and 48 volt. So you pick the voltage which is correct for your bike. P4 is sleep time. I always hit zero because I don't want it, I want it to be on all the time. Now, P5 is your PAS grades. What this is, you have a choice of three different grades or five. I always opt for five. It gives me a little more sensitivity with pedal assist if you use it. P6, very important. It's your wheel size. I have a 29er, so I press 29. You pick your wheel size. And if you don't know your wheel size, you can see it on the side of the rim. Now, P7 says speed measuring magnet. This is very, very important. Your range is from 1 to 100, but for this kit, you want to pick 47. It won't work correctly unless you pick the correct number, so 47 is the number you want. Then P8 is your speed limit, and sometimes it's either set, if you want unlimited speed limit, it's either 50 or 100. You're just going to have to try both and see which one works, but it's one of those two. Otherwise, if you want to really limit your speed, let's say you don't want to go past 29 miles per hour, just set it to 29 and it'll stop at 29 miles per hour, so you can't go any faster. P9 is zero start and non-zero start. Zero start means that the minute you put your throttle on, it'll go. If it's a non-zero start, you have to use pedal assist to kick in the throttle, so that's your choice. So P10 is driving mode. Zero is driven by the PAS purely and so the throttle won't do you any good. One is driven by the throttle, and two is driven by both. That's what I always opt for. P11 is PAS sensitivity. It ranges from 1 to 24. That's completely up to you how sensitive you want it to be. P12 is your start strength for PAS, and that ranges from 0 to 5. Uh, and again, it's completely up to you how much sensitivity you want. Now, if you're using the PAS magnets, P13 is for the type of magnet. Most common are 8 or 12 magnets. P14 is for your current, so it ranges from 12 amp to 20, so it's good for you to know what your controller's amp is. Now some SW900 LCDs come with settings above 14, so you're just going to have to look in your manual, but for the purposes of this particular kit, it stops at 14. So in order to get started, you want to turn on your battery, and then what you're going to do to the um, a control on the left hand side that has two arrows, one up and down, and a middle or M button. Hold down the M button for about five seconds and that'll power on the LCD. To access the actual settings, you want to hold down the up and arrow key at the same time. And that'll bring you into the menu for all the P settings. In order to scroll through your settings, you want to press the M or middle button and it'll move you through your settings. So P1 is your backlight brightness. Uh, you can set from 1 being the darkest to 3 being the brightest. I always keep it at 3 because particularly out in the sunshine, I really want to be able to see that uh, all the information that's available on my LCD. P2 is uh, the difference between kilometers and mileage. I live here in the U.S., so I pick number 1, which is for miles, or you could pick 0 for kilometers. P3... P3 is voltage class. It's between 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. I happen to have a 48 volt kit, so I pick 48 volts. P4 is hibernation time. I always pick zero for never because I, I want to keep it on. But that's up completely up to you. Then P5. This is uh, your PAS uh, settings. And you can set whether you have five variables or three. I set five. So I picked the 1-5 gear mode ratio. Wheel diameter, this is super important. I, have a I ride only 29ers. Uh, a lot of people have 26 inch, but whatever your wheel size, you definitely want to put that on there because otherwise you're never going to get an accurate readout of your speed or your mileage. Now, P7 is really important. Uh, the magnet steel number for speed test range. And it's set, I believe, uh, by default to 100. But for this particular kit, you want to set it to 47. 
It's really important, otherwise your kit won't run correctly. So P8 is speed limit, and this is really important. Uh, you can you can control the speed. So in other words, if you have a situation where you you don't want to go over 25 miles an hour, just set it to 25. But if you want to get the maximum speed out of it, there's two settings. It's either going to be set to 50 or 100, and it does vary from bike to bike. So try both and see if you're getting maximum power out of it. Otherwise, feel free to set the power limit to whatever you'd like. P9 is really important. Zero is for zero start, and one is for non-zero start. And zero start is simply that if you throttle, you'll get power right away. Non-zero start relies on the pedal assist, and so you have to start pedaling before the, the power will actually activate from the motor. Then P10 is the drive mode, and um, zero is just power drive alone. One is electric drive, so you're driving the bike by the handlebars. And then two is the combination of the two. Now, because two will, the, the two setting, the power drive and the electric drive, will not work under zero start mode. It's only for pedal assist. So make sure you pick the right, the right combination there. So here on P12 is where you can set your range for power assist. You can either set it to three, three or five, which gives you a little bit more sensitivity between the settings. P13 is the power magnet steel number. This refers to the number of magnets on your pedal assist magnet, and it's usually 8 or 12, but it should be visible to you so you can count them. Now, depending on your manufacturer or what version of this particular LCD you have, there can be more than 13, 14, 15 settings. Uh, that all really varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. But basically, I've gone through the, the, the principal list, and um, if you have those additional settings, you can find manuals online pretty easily. Now, one function that I do have to mention, because I learned this the hard way, uh, but it is on your uh, LCD, is if you hold down the uh, bottom arrow key for five seconds, it'll go into cruise control, which automatically puts your bike moving at about six kilometers an hour. So I was off my bike last week and standing there and I inadvertently hit the button and my bike started to take off. So I had to wrestle it to the ground. I didn't realize right away that I had done that, uh, but I was able to turn off the battery and get the bike back. So I'm really excited to show you guys the uh, TFT color uh, 750 LCD display. And it's only been around for a couple of years, but it's great. It gives you lots and lots of information about your bike and uh, has lots of settings that are really important to control. It gives you lots and lots of options. It's really crystal clear, the display, easy to see in the sun, easy to see in the dark. It's just an all-around great display. Unfortunately, it's not available for all controllers. So we're going to start with the program. I'll show you. I'm going through the menu. It gives you various maximum speed, average speed, um, your miles per hour, your wattages on the right-hand side, your control, your pedal assist, and all, all you're doing here is working the thumb part here that has a power switch, it has a menu switch, and an up and down. And in order to access your menu settings, you need to double click the menu button twice very fast and it'll get you into the main basic settings. Use the menu to scroll through and here is the system. So as you can see, the, the first uh, on your display settings is uh, between Imperial and Metric. I pick Imperial. If you're in Europe, uh, you want to pick Metric. Uh, then you can control your brightness, uh, control whether the, uh, the screen goes off automatically or not. And then uh, scenes, uh, is, is you can switch between digital and analog. I choose digital. Then, of course, the ba battery indicator, which I find one of the most important things on an e-bike, is you can switch between the percentage of the battery that's left, which is what I choose to do. Uh, you can turn it off, or you can pick voltage. Now, I know this sounds really simple, but I'm so happy this uh, display has a clock on it. Uh, my other displays don't have clocks on it. It's just one of those simple things. Just to have that available is great. You can change the year and all the settings on it, but it's just... So then you can, by pressing the power button, you can go over to the basic settings where you can put your wheel size, your uh, battery voltage if you're running a 52 or 48. And then in order to get into advanced settings, uh, you're going to need a password, and the stock password for this particular manufacturer is 1919. So in order to get to the advanced settings, you're going to have to plug in your password. Or you can actually, there's a setting there to change it if you want to customize it. So here you get to pick your speed limit. I've maxed out at 99 kilometers. 
your ampage, I've got 35 amp controller. Um, drive mode, system throttle is what I choose. You can pick just one or the other or both. And then at the throttle level, I pick 50% because if you pick 100%, it just accelerates too quickly. So 50% is a really nice sweet spot for me. And then you press the menu button to escape back to the main display. And one of the things I really like about this display is that when I power off, it saves all my information, whereas my other, my other displays, I'd have to start from scratch in terms of miles, the trip distance, so forth and so on. But this is great, so when I power back up, all my data from that trip has been saved, and I can just continue on my trip. Uh, it's just another little feature, but really important to me. So that's it. That's the uh, TFT color 750 display, and uh, I really like it. I've been riding it for a couple of weeks now, and it's, and it's great. So I will include a link to the uh, manual below in the description. And again, thanks so much for, for watching our videos. Hi, I'm Kirby with